Okay, right. A test of uh, how much you understand from the course so far can be demonstrated through your understanding of this comic strip joke. I get it, but it's not tickling the funny bone. Oh. What a shame. Okay, right, so um, target for today is to get through uh, and understand the least squares regression line and how to use it. Um, this, if you remember, was the perfect line of best fit for a scattergraph's data. We've looked at, con so far, we've had the product moment correlation coefficient, um, and we've had Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, and both had slightly different uses depending on the context of the problem. Okay, um, We've had a lot of little bits and pieces that we've had to pick up along the way, a lot of stock phrases that we need to be aware of to answer the exam style questions. Okay. So with the knowledge that we're going to go through uh, in this lesson, hopefully you will have everything that you need uh, to be able to tackle the uh, correlation regression, qu regression question. Oh, it's quite difficult to say those two things at the same time. Regression question um, on the uh, exam paper. So um, the least squares regression line Now, we know from GCSE that the line of best fit, um, depending on who drew it, could be quite different. They should all be going in the relatively the same direction, um, and they'll have a range of values for the y-intercept, a range of values for the gradient, but it was always kind of very iffy. So... Uh, what we want is a straight line equation. Um, a y equals a plus bx, a y equals mx plus c, uh, where we can f calculate somehow the gradient and y-intercept directly. So that's the idea of it. However, before we move on, um, a question that's already arisen uh, from what we've looked at previously, and that's to do with which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable, we need to have that clear uh, because that is going to give us which is the x value, which is the y value, which is on the horizontal axis, which is on the vertical axis. Now, for the product moment correlation coefficient, um, that doesn't actually matter which way round you do it. Okay? You'll still get the same value. However, for the least squares regression line, it will make a difference to your y-intercept and gradient. So you need to get this the right way round. And there's quite commonly a question uh, as part of this problem where you might be asked, which of these two, in this context, is the independent variable? And can you explain the reason as to why? OK. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a go at seeing if we can identify the variables. So grab a mini whiteboard for me. OK. And I'm going to give you a series of scenarios. OK, so the first one you're going to get. Um, the two variables are the temperature of the water and the second variable is the time it takes for an egg to cook. Which of the two would be the independent variable? Yeah, which one? Uh, so if you can, it usually is easier if you determine which one depends on the other. OK, so that identifies the dependent variable. And so the other one must be the independent one. OK, five, four, three, 
two, one. Let's see, what choice have you made? Okay, so the independent variable of these two would be the temperature of the water. Okay, now one thing that it is very useful to take note of here, okay, hen idea, right, in your notes, right, is that um, maybe from science when, uh, when you've done experiments, the independent variable is often the one that you have control over. Okay, so if there is something that you have control over changing, then more often than not, that, that one will be your independent variable. I have some control over the temperature of the flame that I use, okay, to boil the water, which in hence boils the egg. So it's all about which one can you control. How about this one? The time it takes to run a mile, and the amount of exercise a person gets. Is it the amount of exercise the person gets normally, or the amount of exercise they get from running, from running that mile? I think it would be more of the case of uh, the amount of exercise a person gets is how they get generally. Okay, so the amount of exercise they do, and how long it takes to get one mile. Yeah. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Make a decision. Okay, right. I think most people went for uh, number two. So, yeah, I'd agree with you because um, that's the one that we have control over. Let's have a look at the third one. <coughs> the height of the grass, the amount of fertiliser that's used. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, good. Yeah, go for VT as well. This one? Should be just algae, not just a algae. <laughs> a algae? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Right. So, yeah, B1. And the last one. Five, four, three, two, one. So, yes, V2. So the moment, right, the moment that you understand that it is the one that you have control over, right, that makes it a lot clearer, the one that you can control, that is the independent variable. Okay. Well, here's a scatter graph, okay? So here's some uh, data points plotted on my graph. And here is the line that fits the data best, okay? So this would be your least squares regression line. Now you'll notice that in this case that uh, none of the data points actually go, uh, that are actually on the line. And one thing that we are often interested in is how far these data points are away from that line. Because then you have a way of identifying perhaps some points that have been um, either incorrectly recorded, perhaps, or they could be correctly recorded but are just outliers or anomalies. Now, the way to really look at how far away from the line they are, we are going to be looking at the vertical displacement from the line. So 
They have the correct x value, yes, but the y value is less than we would expect or higher than we would expect, okay, in, this, in these cases. And we would refer to them uh, with a letter, epsilon. Epsilon is used, another Greek letter for our collection, uh, epsilon is used to represent... Uh, what are referred to as the residuals. Okay, so they are the vertical displacement from the point to the line. So if you're thinking about, well, how do I calculate that? Well, what you're going to need is the point, okay, the coordinates of the point, and then we grab the y value of the point itself, and then take away the y value that you would expect to get, so the y value of that point there. Now that could be found by substituting x1, the x value in, to the y equation. Okay, so that would be uh, a plus b x i. So the least squares regression line will have this equation, y equals a plus bx. And this is how we can calculate the value of a residual. Now what that'll do is because the y value for each of these points that's below the line is obviously less than the y value on the line, each of those will give you a negative result and each of these will give you a positive result, okay? So um, you'd be able, if you had the least squares regression line uh, and you had a point uh, that's going to be added to uh, the data set, for example, um, you could use that to determine whether it's going to appear above or below the line. Now, how do we get this least squares regression line? That's the real issue that we've got. How do we get the A and how do we get the B? Now, thankfully, um, the A and the B are given to you in the formula booklet. Okay? Um, how to actually calculate them. So, if we grab our formula booklets... And we have a look at page number six on the right hand side. You will find that in the formula booklet it'll say that this is the equation of the least squares regression line. Okay? So the x bar, y bar are clearly the y and x and y uh, means. And the b can be found by calculating sxy over sxx. Now these two guys we've already met. Now you might be wondering, well, where's that come from? Okay, how is that derived? I'm not going to go through the derivation. Um, in the S2 textbook, in the appendix uh, that you'll find at the back of the book, um, there is a derivation of it. And it's not the only way that you can derive it, because um, you can also derive it via calculus, because um, obviously you're doing a least squares regression line, and so you could uh, look at some differentiation as part of that. 
Yes, all of that. It's going to be true that if you added up all of the epsilon values, mm. that they have to sum to zero. Yes. Yes. So that is a consequence of that, uh, that all of those epsilons will sum to zero. Yeah. We should probably make a note of that. That'd be useful, wouldn't it? Okay. So all of those guys will add up to zero. So, as I said, there is a derivation for it in the back of the textbook, which you can work through if you like. It is about three pages long. Okay? Uh, there are videos online that will go through it. They run into the kind of like 25 minutes. Okay? So it is quite a lengthy derivation to get there. So I don't think it's going to be, it's a bit above our kind of pay grade at the moment to really worry about where that has come from. Now, this bit here, this A, uh, is just going to be a rearrangement, really, of uh, what we've already got. Um, so you can expand that out and get it into that format, the y equals a plus bx. Now, we've seen um, that your calculator, now if you remember, when you've done this on your calculator and you found the value of R, the product moment correlation coefficient, we also had an A and a B appear in, ex in precisely the same screen. Okay, The A and the B appear in precisely the same screen. They are the A and the B that you're getting in this equation here. So you can calculate it directly, but obviously, just like the product moment correlation coefficient, we need to make sure that we're showing all the working. So use these formulas that we've got in the textbook, in the uh, formula booklet, rather, in order to work out that regression line, because that's going to be something like a, a five marker in order to do it. If you're given the data, then, you know, it's put in a calculator, bish, bash, bosh, and you've got it. Okay, but you'll be able to use that as a check. Make sure you've got the correct result. Right, okay, so what we're going to do is going to go through this question here. Uh, a patient is given a drip feed containing a particular chemical, and its concentration in his blood is measured in suitable units at one hour intervals for the next five hours. The doctors believe the figures to be subject to random errors arising both from the sampling procedure and the subsequent chemical analysis, but that a linear model is appropriate. So we've got the times and we've got the concentrations, and we're asked to find the equation of the regression line of y on x. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is to use this formula here in order to get there. So we're going to need x bar and y bar. Okay. And we're also going to need to work out SXX and SXY. So use the formula booklet and um, your calculators to get all of the elements that you need to substitute in to these formulas. Okay? Have you uh, recognised as to why this is the equation here? What formula does it look like? Think about the equation of straight line formula. That's it, yes. So remember that what we've got here, 
once you've got your data, you've got that mean point, the x bar, y bar, okay? We plotted that when we first did uh, our correlation and regression of back in the first lesson. The least squares regression line must pass through that point. Okay. So once you've worked out x bar, y bar, you always know one point that the least squares regression line will go through. Now, um, you might then be thinking, well, OK, so I've got that, and I've got this equation line. Now, this is all right uh, to plot. If I, had, if I had to plot it, this might probably be OK because uh, I can see it's going through 2.1 on the y-axis. Okay, So I just need to make sure I've got 2.1 and my other point there, and then I could just draw a line going straight through. If this point isn't so obvious to plot, um, which can happen if maybe the data looks something more like this, okay, and the graph that you've been given looks like that, you might have the mean point, okay, that one there, but you can't actually plot the y value because it's all the way down the grid. You just need to choose another point, another value of x that is within and between those values. So just choose another one, okay, get that x value, figure out what the y value is, and then you can draw your line going through those two points. Okay? You just need another point that is on your grid, and then you can draw your line. That's the easiest way to do it. Don't think about trying to do one along 1.8 up. Okay? One along 1.8 up, and then try and do that. As it, it will just get too messy. Okay? So plotting the line uh, is an important skill. Yes. How come, so like I had y equals a plus 9 over 5 or 1.8x, then I plugged in 0 and 2.4, so a was on 2.4. Mm -hmm. Why is that wrong? So you put in, so you have y equals a plus 1.8x, yeah. and you substitute in those? No, I substitute in That's because the, be the, line, the least squares regression line doesn't necessarily go through that point. Because oh. remember, the, the line doesn't have to go through any of the points. And you don't know which one it does go through, if it does. OK? So, so yeah, that's a very good point. Don't just use points from the table to work out the gradient and things like that. OK? Right, the last thing to consider is using this line. Okay? Um, this is uh, an important concept uh, to make sure you're aware of. I think, you know, you probably inherently know this, but the least squares regression line, and the lines of best fit that you used uh, back at GCSE, they only are going to work reasonably well for a certain va range of values. Now, if you are looking at a point, uh, so you've got all your data points here, okay, I've got the last one up here, and I've drawn my least squares regression line. If I want to use the least squares regression line to uh, determine a point that is within that range, then that seems reasonable to do, and that's referred to as interpolation. So interpolating the result. If, however, you go outside of that area, okay, so you try an x value of 45 or something like that, then you can't really use your least squares regression line anymore because you haven't 
you haven't actually recorded any data that is there. It's not necessarily true that these are just going to continue up in both directions. It could be that the data that you've collected looks like it's going up in a straight line. And then after a certain while, it starts to curve upwards, for example. We don't know. We don't know about the context of the situation. So results that are outside would be referred to as extrapolating the results. And in some cases, just really can't be trusted. So make sure you've kind of got those words uh, written down so that you are able to refer to that uh, if you are asked it in an exam situation. OK? So I think we're in a position where we can now move forward with an exam style problem. So you can see what the deal is. We've got how to calculate the least squares regression line, uh, the formula to use. We've worked through how to do that. We know that the line has to go through the mean of the x and the y. And we also know if we've got a plot one, uh, how to get another point to draw the line. And if we're asked any questions about uh, interpreting any particular points, um, we know about extrapolation and interpolation. Okay?